Hi friends, it's Sienna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life, and boy am I excited for this book review. <laughs> okay, so here's what happened. I had a book review planned, and then when I went to my secular Franciscan gathering, we got this adorable note. What? We got a brand new book hot off the press, the Franciscan Daily Companion, complimentary of the um, Friars Minor Conventional, Minister Provincial. You've heard me talk about him, the, the very right Reverend Father James McCurry. He decided to gift us this book for free. This book is by Father Jude Winkler. You may have heard of him. He's another conventional friar. He composed this during 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown which he spent it says cocooning in the cloister at Portun <laughs> the Portiuncula Friary of the Franciscan Friars Conventual in Ellicott City Maryland and so we were all gifted with one of these it's a little guy it's about the same size this way as um, the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary but you can see it's it's a little bit slimmer um, than some of them you now it's about the same as the modern little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It may be just a little bit slimmer than the more traditional one and definitely slimmer than the little office of Baltimore. So a very much pocket sized book. You could um, definitely throw this in any bag or anything. It is under $10. I think it comes in at $9.95. I did check. Um, it's available just about everywhere, but CFP Holy Angels, the Confraternity of Penitents Holy Angels Bookshop does have that, and you can get that online, and it supports all their good work as well as their retreat houses, which we have covered in, I'm going to point up here, this video here. So let's see. Let's just do an unboxing of it. It does, this is a soft leather cover, Franciscan Daily Companion, and down here is, we've talked about this before, can you see that, friends? It's the conformity, so it's the cross, and then the bare arm is Christ's. That's this one over here on this side. On this side, you have the arm of St. Francis. You can tell that because you can see his shirt sleeve, the habit sleeve, and they both have the stigmata. That's why they're showing like that. And they're up in the clouds, supposedly like, you know, St. Francis and Christ are both in heaven right now. And underneath it says, my God and my all. Um, so there's the little crest there. So letting you know it's a secular Franciscan one. Ah, I'm seeing on the back cover, there are other titles in this series. And so the other ones have different symbols. Can you see that? The other ones have different symbols. So in this one, the conformity is letting you know that this is a Franciscan book. Very sweet. It is published by Catholic Book Publishing Corp, which is just www.catholicbookpublishing.com. Okay, we're going to open it up. Again, this is embossed. Can you see this detail there? It's a very lovely little book. You open it up, and actually, the conformity symbol is all over the end papers. Let's see front and back. <laughs> Wait, how do you get this off of here? It is firmly on there. There may be a way to break that. It, I thought it was just going to slide off, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to slide off. There must be a... Well, I literally just popped the end paper there trying to get this off. So be a little bit more careful. You may want to take some scissors or rip the cardboard I'm going to just rip that cardboard off. Whoopsies. Yeah, great. So rip that cardboard off. It's on there very snugly because it's not fixed on there in any way. It's not like tape. It's not like shrink wrapped. It's more ecologically friendly to just have this cardboard sheet very tightly on there. Um, but that makes it very difficult to get off. So you're going to want to grab a little pair of scissors and cut that off. Whoopsies. Let's see. And what is after the end paper? It has... The Peace Prayer of St. Francis. It does let you know it was written in the spirit of St. Francis, which lets you know that it's not a direct quote of St. Francis, but it is Franciscan, just not written by St. Francis. And then it starts out Franciscan Daily Companion, because it does seem odd to me. This isn't really St. Francis, but it's sort of Franciscan. But maybe it'll make sense when we get in the book. Um, here is the prayer that we say all the time with a picture of the San Damiano cross. So you may re really like this. It is in English, and the translation they use is, Most high, glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart, and give me true faith, certain hope, and perfect charity, sense and knowledge, Lord, that I may carry out your holy and true command. Amen. And let you know that is by St. Francis. 
What does it say over here? Franciscan Daily Companion, Minute Meditations for Every Day, containing an inspirational quote from a Franciscan saint or blessed, a reflection and a prayer. So you're going to get the quote from a Franciscan saint or blessed and a reflection and a prayer. Nice little daily devotional. It is by Reverend Jude Winkler, OFM Conventional, Catholic Book Publishing Corp, New Jersey. The table of contents is here. It's pretty small, pretty clear. Um, it has introduction, then January, February, March. After December, then it says prayers. The imprimi protest is by the very Reverend James McCurry, OFM Conventional, Minister Provincial of Our Lady of the Angels Province. Yay! Um, the Nihal Opsop is by Reverend Powell Tomzik, PhD, the Censor Laborum. The Imprimator is the Most Reverend Kevin A. Sweeney, DD, Bishop of Patterson. I don't know them. I only knew the first guy. Sorry. But I'll cheer for them all. Yay! Um, and that was on November 6, 2020. If, again, if you don't know what those are, the Nihil Obstat and the Imprimator are official declarations that a book or pamphlet is free of doctrinal or moral error. No implication is contained therein that those have, who have granted the Nihil Obstat and Imprimator agree with the contents, opinions, or statements expressed. It is dedicated to the friars of the Portiuncula Friary. Very sweet. It was printed in China, so that's... A little awkward on one hand we really want to give jobs to Chinese who are struggling but on the other hand the Chinese government has a lot of policies going on that we don't like in the Chinese church it's complicated so uh, I don't know make your decision there the introduction oh wait I didn't cover this the page edges are orange they're kind of like this tan this tan is very orangey so it's similar um, and then there is actually a one single ribbon because it's a daily devotional. So you're going to move this every day. So you only need one ribbon. That's the premise. We'll see what else is in here. Because remember, there was an introduction and a prayer section at the end. So let's see if we agree that we only need one ribbon. The introduction. The origin of Franciscan spirituality. You can tell it's new. The pages may stick the first time through. Good thing it's daily. You're going to figure out. Check that date. Make sure it's that day's date and your pages aren't sticking together. The origin of Franciscan spirituality can be traced to the founders of the Franciscan movement, St. Francis and St. Clair. A number of the values that one can see in their lives are those that we identify as Franciscan. Poverty, simplicity, obedience to the will of God, chastity, love of the Eucharistic Lord, compassion, and many more. But the movement was not so fixed by its founders that it became unchangeable. Rather, towards the end of his life, St. Francis said to his followers, I have done my part. Now it is time for you to do yours. Thus, in this meditation book on Franciscan spirituality, we see the contributions of Franciscans of all three orders, from the foundation of the movement to the present day. Certain choices have been made in the organization of the material. Sayings have been taken from the writings and teachings of only saints and blesseds. Occasionally, some of the saints and blesseds might not be readily recognized as Franciscan. This is true because they belong to the order of secular Franciscans, like Pope St. John the Twenty-Third, Blessed Veronica Antal, St. Francis de Sales, and St. John Vianney, among others. You may not have known that, but there's a lot of saints who were also secular Franciscans, Remember, I have told you that before, but if you haven't watched all my videos, fine. So lay people can be secular Franciscans, but also diocesan priests. So if a priest is not already in a religious order, he may join the secular Franciscans. We used to just be called the third order Franciscans, but then so many groups ended up going back, back to monasteries, back to friaries, back to cloisters. Um, so there's a lot of third order Franciscans who are not groups of lay people. So that's why the change of the name kind of came about to remind us that we're both in the world, but not of the world. We're also not one of the more uh, religious wars that are like all men or all women living together, that sort of spirituality. Did that make sense? Yeah, it's confusing to even us in the family. We're just a blended family. Go with that. But so if a priest was a diocesan priest, he may have been able to join the secular, what's now called the secular Franciscans, as well as there are some saints who were secular Franciscans first and then went and founded their own orders. 
So that happened too. <laughs> Sayings have at times been slightly abridged in order that they might fit the space allotted. Care has been taken so that these adjustments do not change the sense of what the author intended. The sayings have been arranged in such a way that they might reflect the tenor of the various liturgical feasts celebrated throughout the year. May this short meditation book assist those using it to embrace the rich and profound spirituality of the Franciscan movement, Father Jude Winkler. So let's jump in. Hey, look at the one for today, maybe. What is today? It is October 18th. Again, these pages are sticking, but once you go through it once, they won't. Another thing to do, since it is a soft cover, you can do this a few times. If you've ever worked in an office, you know we do this. It's called fanning the pages or the paper. We always did this before we put paper in the printer when I worked in an office. But you can do it with a book, too, if it's got a nice, flexible cover. It allows you to do this a few times in a new book. Um, then let's find October. I mean, we know it's going to be the back half of the book, right? And it is the 18th. Here we go. I'm going to put the ribbon in here. It is page 152. Okay, this is a little awkward. The page numbers are in the center. They're in the center bottom, okay? Um, as well, the dates are on the inside. I might have liked to have the date on the outside. It makes it a little quicker to find, but this is the way they chose to do it. So having that ribbon may be helpful because it's, I mean, it's bigger print and it's bold, so it's easy to see, but I, I just prefer it on the outside because I like to flip. So these ones, okay, are on the outside for when you're flipping, but these ones are on the inside, maybe on the outside of both pages. I don't know, I'm just not sure that I would have set it up exactly this way, but it's kind of nice. They start out each of them with the first letter illuminated, right, decorated. Doesn't have the gold ink, but they are each different. So on the day we have, starts with L for loving, and it also has a, the sun. It has a flower, a dove, and some grass. Can you see? It? Okay, loving compassion made him regard everything with affection, but especially the souls which Jesus Christ redeemed with his precious blood, St. Bonaventure. Okay, it doesn't say where the quote came from. Again, he did warn us this was abridged for space. This is supposed to be a little book that you can throw in your pocket. So it doesn't tell us where that quote came from. Maybe there's a section in the back. We'll check that later. So that was the quote of the day. Loving compassion made him regard everything with affection but especially the souls which Jesus Christ redeemed from his precious blood, sorry, with his precious blood. Now you may want to do a little bit of Lexio Divina kind of thing on that. You may want to do that quote a couple of times, read it over it, kind of let it mull around in your head. Even if you're not journaling with it and doing Lexio Divina where you're um, sitting there, I think I have videos on Lexio Divina, I'm just gonna point. But you could just repeat it to yourself several times to really digest that and then go into the reflection because you may have a different reflection that's given to you by the spirit, but you may be in a hurry and just want to go ahead and read it. Let's see what they have. Loving the redeemed of the Lord. Okay. So that's okay. It's like, it's like, it's like father Jude went and did that. Um, like he did Lexio Divina on that. And this is the, the theme he took from it. Loving the redeemed of the Lord reflection. Oh, sorry. That is in red. And then, the reflection is the next thing. God created every person in his image and likeness. The blood of Christ on the cross redeemed every person. Remember, friends, we've talked about that. That's why you want a crucifix with the arms out. If you get one with the arms up, that's a, I don't remember the exact word, but that is a heretical cross. It's saying that God only, only redeemed the few. We want one with the arms out. He redeemed all of us. Everything is so symbolic in Christianity. <laughs> okay, let's start that reflection again. God created every person in his image and likeness. Every person. The blood of Christ on the cross redeemed every person. Given the incredible dignity, dignity with which each of us is endowed and the terrible price of our redemption, how could we not view each and every person with great affection? Each one is extremely precious to the Lord. And you may want to set that down and again, digest that for a few minutes, or you may want to pick that back up and continue with your prayer. Totally up to you. Um, and then it has a prayer. This could be a, a lovely way to start either your morning or your evening prayer too. Go ahead and do this. Or maybe do morning prayer in the morning, okay? 
and you're going to do evening prayer in the evening, maybe do this at lunchtime. You could just grab this because you could throw it in your pocketbook if you're leaving the house, a suit jacket, back pocket, laptop bag, whatever, um, and just pull this out at lunch and just read this quickly. Um, if you're working from home, you could just set this. It's not going to take up much room on your desk or you could stick it next to your tower or, you know, wherever, find a little spot in your office for it that you could just grab it if you have a moment. Oh, especially if you're working from home. God bless those of you who are working from home. It's crazy stressful. I know I see my husband go through it. So you may want to have this. If you have a moment between meetings, this could be something that you could do. And if you're just going to have a moment, maybe read the quote early in the day, read the reflection in some other time and save the prayer for the end of the workday. The prayer is, Lord, may I always treat each person I meet with the same dignity I would show you. Ooh, that's very, very deep. Because then you have to contemplate what is the dignity that you would show Christ? And that gets to that whole conversation. Um, I was having with somebody the other day who said, you know, that whole communion on the tongue, communion on the hand conversation. He's like, you know, I think the apostles had communion on the hand. And if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Um, that's an odd conversation. Because for me, if Christ, I haven't, I haven't been walking with Christ for a couple of years, you know, in his ministry. And I think if I saw Christ, if he would suddenly appear physically in the church, in, in the person, you know, his personhood, uh, you know, looking like a person, and he would just suddenly show up in church, would I just go up and stick my hands out at him? Like, would I just walk up to him? If Jesus came, would I run up or walk up to him? Would I think... I think if Jesus suddenly appeared in human form in the church, I would fall to my knees. Um, like, the, like the song says, down in adoration falling. Right? I think I would fall to my knees. And that is one of the reasons I ended up doing, starting to do communion kneeling and on the tongue. Because in all fairness, if Christ appeared before me, which he is in the Eucharist, uh, my spiritual eyes see that that is Christ. That was something we talked about too. And I need to get those readings on that. But your physical eyes and your spiritual eyes. Um, my spiritual eyes do see Christ in, in the form of the bread there, the consecrated host. I cannot help but to fall to my knees. And do I do dramatically? That was a talk on Twitter yesterday about women dramatically falling to their knees for the Eucharist. But if that's our Lord and Savior, I just, well, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. If Christ appears physically looking like a person in church and he has those wounds, what are you going to do? Are you just going to walk up to him and stick your hands out? Give me some. Um, no, it's, it's not. I can't, I can't do that. Now, would I, would I run up to Jesus and, you know, flip my head open and, and back and stick my tongue out at him? I don't know that I would do that if Christ appeared either, but I would definitely fall on my knees and... That, that is where that started for me. Um, because I am receiving the Eucharist when he appears in our church currently. He is in the form of the consecrated host. And so that is what I do. I fall to my knees because he's my God. I flip my head back and stick my tongue out because I am receiving the Eucharist. And I want to make it as easy on the priest as I can so that he doesn't have to actually touch my tongue or my face or my hands or anything like that. He has the consecrated hands. And there's a consecrated host, and it should go directly onto my little tongue. Um, that's the end of that. That's the end of that rant. This was not sponsored by anyone who gave an ehill opsat. Like those were my own thoughts there, um, Father. You did not say that, but you can see how you can go into reflection. So if I'm showing that dignity, that reverence to Christ when He's among us, I'm not going to fall to my knees in front of every person, but I. They are the body of Christ. Still, I am going to stop and think very reverently about them. Now they, I would walk up to, I'm probably not going to fall to my knees in front of every person I meet, but spiritually will I? Maybe I do because um, the, the gospel reading this weekend, right, was Mark 10 45. If you watch the Mass on EWTN, I did go back and watch that homily. Their homilies are always a little bit different you know, than the one you get from your parish or local priest. And he talked about making that into a bumper sticker. Or setting your alarm every day, 10.45 a.m. and p.m. And stop and do an act of service for other people. So contemplate that, that he came not to 
be served, but to serve. And so when I go up to each person, you know, when we're, when we are kneeling before God, when we receive the Eucharist, that's what we're saying, like thy will be done. We're not just saying that we're accepting the Lord into us. We're accepting his mission as much as we are accepting his body and blood. You know, we're, we're saying, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out and do your mission. That's part of receiving worthily, not just that you've gone to confession and you've been purified and you're not holding any grudges against your brothers and sisters. That's where the sign of peace came from. Um, you have to be at peace with your brothers and sisters. That's in the gospel as well um, before you receive the Eucharist. But you have to also be willing to accept the mission of Christ. And that's one of the things you're humbly saying, yeah, I am. So you're not just kneeling before our Lord um, completely out of adoration, but also you're saying, yes, like knight to me, like in knighthood, you know, when they get out the sword and make you a knight of the kingdom, you're accepting the mission of that king to defend him and to protect the people. That's part of why we kneel as well. We're doing that movement. And so, yes, instead of bowing my head completely there, which that, that was symbolically offering the king your neck. He could chop your neck if he didn't feel that you were worthy to become a knight. Or that you were worthy, you know, if you had committed some sin and you were apologizing to the king and begging for your life. He had that option. You're being so humble. He has that option. You're exposing your biggest weakness there, your neck. And when we go back, I mean, we're literally flipping back our head. We're actually offering our lives to Christ right there. We're offering our lives and we're saying, yes, I'm going to take on your mission. When you feed me, I'm going to then use that to go out into your mission. <laughs> ah, good book. <laughs> Look at all that I got from this little book. And so if each day is this fruitful, and so now I'm thinking, yeah, when I go out and when I see a person, I remember that uh, how I fall on my knees before the Lord and I accept that mission. And so when I see those people, they are part of my mission. What do I need to do with this person? How is my interaction going to be reflecting that mission that Christ gave me? So no, I'm not going to kneel before the person, but I'm going to consider what my mission is towards that person. Am I the loving ears of the Lord to listen to them? Do they need the loving hands of the Lord to do something for them? What is it? How can I serve that person? How can I serve the Lord through serving that person? Mark 10, 45. Give me a look. Um, if you can watch the homily from yesterday, which was what? October 17th. It's on EWTN. Um, give that a little watch. Wow. Okay, so this book led me to all that. Thank God bless you for watching me this long. I hope that these are each going to be so fruitful. Let me tell you some of the other... I'll go through some of the other people who are quoted and maybe give you some of the topics. So, St. Lawrence of Brindisi. St. Angela of Folagino. Folagino. You know who... I... Ooh, Wow. St. Bridget of Sweden, St. Anthony of Padua, St. Maximilian Colby, St. Francis de Sales, Blessed Giles of Assisi, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Clare of Assisi, St. Bonaventure, St. Fidelis of Sigmaringen, Blessed Andrea Giacinto Longin. Sorry. Um, let's flip. Blessed Giles again. Oh, but St. Francis Anthony Fasani. St. Bonaventure. So I'm going to be learning a lot of new saints and some old friends like here's St. Mary and Cope again. Um, St. Pius of Pietroclina. Can we just say Padre Pio? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to flip towards the beginning and look for some of the themes of the day. Oh, well, one theme is the Feast of Blessed Agnellus of Pisa. And the quote is not by that person. The quote is by Blessed Miguel Tomasek. So why is the feast a theme? I don't know yet. We'll find out. The Spirit teaches us how we should pray. Do anything but sin. Oh, how much God loves us. Love and poverty. The mysteries of our faith. When we cannot pray. Peace in the midst of chaos. Committing oneself to conversion. Our Lord is always there. Our value before the Lord. So you can see these are lovely. I'm going to show you some more of the little symbols here. You can see the artwork. Right, the flames of the Holy Spirit. Um, oh, that's another flames of the Holy Spirit. Oh, they're both W, so maybe they're by the letter. There's the lamb again. There's the crown and the scepter on the eye. So maybe they're by the letter, which symbol you get. Yes, they do seem to repeat. Okay, so there's one per letter. 
Right, there was also a section in the back on here on prayers. What was that? Oh, it looks like it's not terribly big. Remember, the pages may stick together the first time you're reading, so give me a second to get through these. So after the 31st, 31st, December 31st, you flip. So there's not something suddenly saying prayers. It just starts into them. There is the Canticle of the Creatures, and there's a lovely image of St. Francis with the animals. And then the Praises of God. Is that it? And then other outstanding books in this series. Let me see if that's the prayers. That Canticle of the Creatures is on page 190. Is that what it's saying? Prayers, page 190. So it's just the Canticle of the Creatures, which takes up two pages. And then the Praises of God. Ooh, friends, I know. I love Father Jude. I love the Friars. But here are some typographical things I don't like. Um, hyphenated words at the end of a line. I would rather that came down. Because look, the only thing on this line is D-O-R, which isn't even a whole word. I would have brought the splendor down. So who's ever doing the typeset on these, I I would choose to do the layouts a little differently when if I was the editor. Uh, yeah, I would have broken that up differently. And there's a couple of them. Like this one, colored flow and you might think it might be flowing or something but it's flowers <laughs> it's just a little awkward i didn't see that in the main text oh no it's here because here's convince c-o-n and then vince uh, they even broke up the word enunciation that is awkward if they ever do a second edition or more of these i know they say it's for um space and they're trying to keep the book down to a minimum but those hyphenated words are very awkward and they're very difficult for people who's um, have any kind of reading disability or English is not their first language. So mm, I would probably s try and fix those and see if it really changes the length of the book because they really are trying to stick to a very firm half page right for each of these. So I, I, that's got to be incredibly difficult, but I might figure out a different way to do that. Maybe not have two separate paragraphs for each reflection. Maybe just put them in one paragraph because I mean, they're the paragraphs are like two sentences and then the next one's one sentence. Or this one over here is one, two, three sentences and then two sentences. So the the normal standard for a paragraph is like three to five sentences. So maybe they could realistically put those all together in a paragraph. It's a little awkward to make the reflection two paragraphs. That is how I would save spaces. I would make the reflection all one paragraph and get rid of those hyphenated words because it's super awkward. And maybe they did that because maybe there was too much space when they made them all into one paragraph and they felt it was too much space. I don't know. Um, that's a bit awkward. And, and honestly, these are tiny, tiny details that I would fix. Yeah, it's in the quote. <laughs> the soul, the more a soul becomes like immaculata, the more it becomes moth of Jesus in its heart in a supernatural fashion. St. Maximilian Colby. He's not talking about Mothra. It was mother, but it was hyphenated. Um, and because, see how that's set? Because it's one of the inset quotes. You have the moth, and then you have the number, and then you have to come way over here to get the little er. <laughs> so that's, um, yeah, that's not, would not be my first choice. And there is space down here at the end of that quote, so I feel like it could have fit um, if, if they really tried. I don't know. Um, so my, I love, love, love the content. The layout is a little, you know, just little typographical things that I would have changed. And I definitely learned my lesson. You're going to want to cut or rip this off. Don't try and slide it off. You may end up damaging your book slightly. Yeah, so now there's a little tear in my book and that makes me sad. Um, there is a ribbon in here. If you want to be able to flip back quickly to the Canticle of the Creatures, since there's only two prayers, I don't think you need a separate ribbon because it's only, look, here, this is end paper that has the other books by. So all you have to do is flip like one page to get to page 190 with the Canticle of the Creatures. Um, so the prayer section is just those last two pages. They're so far at the end of the book, you're not going to need a ribbon for them. And again, remember there were prayers at the beginning as well. So you don't need a separate ribbon, the one ribbon, all good. Whew, it was a long review. I hope you have stuck with us. Let's say our prayer before the crucifix one more time. Um, actually, let's say the prayer of the day, just so we remember it again. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, may I always treat each person I meet with the same dignity I would show you.
Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.